Okay, so our next unit is unit 9, exponential functions, and our first topic is sequences. So how are exponential models represented in a recursive notation, and then how can they be analyzed or represented in function notation? So we're actually not going to call it function notation, we're going to call it explicit, um, but it's the same type of thing. Okay, so what is a sequence? A sequence is a set of numbers that display a particular order or pattern. So for example, the set of even numbers would be 2, 4, 6, 8, dot, dot, dot. I mean, there's more than that, but um, let's just start off with these. A term is each number, specific number, in the sequence. And we denote this as a sub n. So for example, a sub 1 is the first number. A sub 2 would be the second number. And then somewhere down here, A sub n is going to be the nth number in the sequence. All right, so a recursive notation is, or a recursive equation is an equation that tells you how the nth term is related to one or more preceding terms. So for example, if A n is way down here, then I need to know the previous one, which is called a n minus 1, and then I need to know the one before that, all the way dot 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 a sub 2, and then a sub 1. So in order for me to get a sub n in a recursive, I need to know all the preceding terms. So again, a sub 1 is the first term. a sub n would be the nth term in the sequence. So there's two types of sequences. There's arithmetic and geometric. The first one here is an arithmetic sequence. All right, so if you look at example number one here, consider this list of numbers. What is the pattern that's happening? So from one to the next, here I'm adding three. Add three. Add three, add three. So the pattern here is that I'm adding three consecutively. All right, and then it says give the next three terms. So one, two, three. So if this was a one, this is two, three, four, five. A five was 15. So it wants a sub 6, a sub 7, and a sub 8. So here I would just add 3 to get the next one. So 15 plus 3 is 18, plus 3, 21, plus 3 is 24. So these would be the next three in the sequence. This sequence is called arithmetic. because each term is determined by adding a constant value. That number that we add each time is called the common difference. <clears throat> All right, so we have the recursive formula. So in the recursive formula, you always got to state the first number. So a sub 1 here is the first number in the sequence, so your first term. And then after that, you say, how do you get the nth term? So to get a sub n, you have to take the one before that, a sub n minus one, and add or subtract the common difference. So again, here we say a sub n is the next term. How do you get the next term? Well, you take the previous one, whatever the previous term is, and you add or subtract whatever the common difference is. <coughs> so again, this is recursive because you have to know the previous one in order to get the next one 
an explicit, you don't need to know all the ones in the middle. You can just jump straight to the end one. All right, so the example down here wants us to say, is it arithmetic or not? So here, what do I got to do to get 5 to negative 6? I have to subtract 11. So what about negative 6 to negative 17? I subtract 11 more. Negative 17 to negative 28. I subtract 11 more. So here it says determine if it's arithmetic. So yes, it's arithmetic. And it says if it is, write a recursive equation. So for the recursive equation, we need a sub 1. So again, that's the first number, 5. And then we say to get the next one, so over here to get a sub n, I take the previous one, which is 20, negative 28, and I subtract 11. So again, pretend I wanted a sub 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I wanted the next one, I would take the previous one and subtract 11 from that. So that's basically what this explicit or this recursive notation is saying. Okay, what about second example? From here to here, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, so I'm going to add 16. From here to here, I'm going to add 16. So make sure you check all of them, because from here to here, even though those are 16, this one actually ends up being 14. So because these are not the same, you say it's not arithmetic. So make sure you check all the, the numbers in the pattern, not just the first two. Okay, what about C? From here to here, 12 minus 7 is 5. From here to here, 16 minus 12 is 4. And again, this one is going to be 4 as well. So because they're not the same, we say not arithmetic. And then the final one, from here to here, I add 9. 12 minus 3 is 9 again. 21 minus 12 is 9 again. So again, to tell, you subtract second one minus previous one, previous one, and you get your common difference. So we always start with the first number, a sub 1, is negative 6. You need a starting point. If you don't have a starting point, you don't have a recursive. So the starting one is important. And then again, to get the next one, so pretend, let's say we want to get a sub 5, you take the previous one, a sub n minus 1, a sub 4, and you add 9. So that is what a recursive notation is saying. To get the next one, you take the previous one and do something to it. Alright, so for example number three here, we're given a recursive notation, and it wants us to find the first five terms in the sequence. So when it asks for the terms, I always make spaces. So we have a space for a sub 1, and then a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5. So a 2, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5. Okay, so a sub 1 is given to us. It has to be given to us the starting one. And then to get the other ones, it's saying the common difference is adding 4. So consecutively, to get the next one, I'm just going to add 4. So for A2, I add 4 to 1 and get 5. 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 plus 4 is 9. 9 plus 4 is 13. 13 plus 4 is 17. But what I'm going to, I mean, that, that's the answer. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how the formula works. So the formula right here, a sub n, so let's say we want the fifth one. 
this is saying take a sub n minus 1 and add 4 to it. Well, what is a sub n, or a sub 5 minus 1? Well, that's just a sub 4. And a4 is 13. So 13 plus 4 makes 17. So this is, that's how the recursive works. But again, you can always just go in order like this. All right, so same thing for this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Start with a sub 1. Again, that's the one they give us. And then consecutively, we are going to, this time, the common difference is 7. So we're going to subtract 7 consecutively. So 3 minus 7 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 7 is negative 11. Negative 11 minus 7, negative 18. Negative 18 minus 7, negative 25. So again, that's what this recursive is doing. And you can do the same thing that we did over here to see how the formula works. But again, we already have our answer. Okay, so these arithmetic sequences. They are linear functions. So they have some kind of y equals mx plus b formula in which the number n is your independent variable. So this is like your x term. So the x and y equals mx plus b. And the a sub n is like your y, which is your dependent variable. And the common difference is your slope. So what is the equation going up by? Well, that's your common difference, which is what your slope is in a linear equation. Right, so for my explicit formula, an explicit equation is an equation that gives the a sub n term as the function of its term's position in the sequence. That means if I know where it's at in the sequence, I can just plug in that number and I'll get the answer. So this is like your y equals mx plus b. So your m is your common difference. Your x is your number in the sequence, so your n. And the b value is your starting point, which is not a sub 1, because a sub 1 is where the sequence starts, but that's where it's at 1 in the equation, this one would be a sub 0, means if you go back one more, you'd have the y-intercept. Okay, but here, we usually don't use a formula like this because we don't know what a sub 0 is, and we can find it. But this is the formula we usually use. We can use point-slope form to make an equation and find a specific term in the arithmetic sequence. So if I have the sequence, the y is your a sub n, your nth position, the one I'm looking for, minus your y1 is your starting value. So this is like your a1. Equals the slope is the common difference times your x term is the position it is within the sequence. So x and then here you're going to do minus x1 is the one before that, which is just 1. So here we're going to do x minus 1. So x is the number it is in the sequence. x sub 1 is the first number, the first uh, term. All right, so what I'm trying to do here is just get a sub n by itself. So to get a sub n by itself, I'm just going to add a sub 1. To the end here. And basically this is the equation right here. a sub n equals this stuff. We just reorder it for the formula. For the rule, a sub n equals, we put this in the front, a sub 1 plus, for some reason the formula puts the n minus 1 first and then the common difference after it. But I mean it's the same thing if you put the common difference in the front 
is we tend to add if this D was right here, we tend to add that, and that's not the way order of operations goes. Okay, so the formula, this formula can be used to find the nth term of arithmetic sequence in which the first term is a sub 1, and the common difference is D. All right, for these last few examples, we're using um, the explicit formula to find, in this case, the nth term in the sequence, and then for example five, the formula for the sequence. Okay, so for this one, it wants us to find the twelfth term in this arithmetic sequence. So here, yes, you could, this is one, two, three, four, you could keep going, get five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. You could do that. Uh, but the algebraic way to do that is to actually solve for it using the formula. So here's the explicit formula. So here a sub n, or sorry, a sub 1 is the first term, which is 9. And I'm going to make a formula first before I plug in. So a sub 1, or a sub n equals 9 plus n minus 1. We need to find the common difference. So consecutively, from 1 to the next, we are adding 7. Adding 7. Adding 7. So this is the common difference. So 7 is d. So we're going to multiply that. Okay, so this is what we're going to do on the bottom ones. Uh, we just have to simplify it, but here we don't have to simplify <clears throat> because specifically it's asking us for the 12th term in the sequence. So it's asking us for a sub 12, which means the n value is going to be 12. We're going to do 12 minus 1 times 7. And so simplifying. We do the parentheses part first. 12 minus 1 is 11. Let me go here. And then we multiply. So we're going to do the 11 times 7 is 77. And then finally, we add the 9. So 77 plus 9 is 86. So the 12th term, if I was to keep adding 7, 7 all the way, I would get 86 down here. Okay, so that's what we're doing with these type of problems. Um, you do use order of operations. So again, that's why they put D at the end here. Because if they were to put D in the front, then you would probably add the 7 and the 9, which is not the order of operations we should be using. That's why we put D uh, after the parentheses. Okay, so looking at B, B is the same thing, just worded differently. So here it's giving us a sub 1 is negative 4, d is 6, and n is 9. So what is this thing? So here's the formula. It's saying that my first term in the sequence is negative 4, and my common difference is 6. So here, let me just write the formula real quick for this problem. So if I was to actually create the sequence, the negative 4 would go first, and I would just add 6 to get the next ones. And you could do that all the way to 9. You could keep adding, adding, adding all the way to the ninth one. So here if we add 6, it's 2. If we add 6, it's 8, and then so forth. It wants the ninth number. So again, you could keep adding all the way till you get to the ninth number. But that's what this formula allows us to do. So we're going to try to find a sub 9 in this, using this explicit formula. So 9 minus 1 times 6. So simplifying, negative 4 plus, we do parentheses first, so 8 
times 6. So a sub 9 equals negative 4. Then we multiply these two together, and we get 48. And then finally, we add negative 4 and 48 to get 44. So if I was to keep adding in this sequence, 6, 6, 6, 6, all the way to the ninth one, that would be 44. That would be the ninth number in the sequence. <clears throat> okay, and then C here. Again, same type of question, asked in a slightly different way. So it wants us to find a sub 20 for this sequence right here, when a sub 1 is 15 and the common difference is negative 8. So again, formula. You don't have to write the formula every time. I do, just so that you know what I'm plugging in for. Okay, so the first one is 15. And now we do n minus 1. And it wants, or sorry, uh, it's giving us a common difference is negative 8. So here, um, it wants me to find a sub 20, which is the 20th number in the sequence. So a sub 20, we're going to use 15 plus 20 minus 1. And we're going to multiply by the negative 8. So multiply our parentheses first. We get 19 times the negative 8. So then we're going to multiply. So 15, 19 times negative 8 here is negative 152. So here we're going to end up subtracting since it's negative. So a sub 20 is 15 minus 152, which is negative 137. So again, here's one where you definitely don't want to use the sequence pad, the recursive idea. Start at 15 and subtract 8, subtract 8 20 times. This one is definitely one where you want to use the formula. <coughs> okay, so the last two examples, the A and B, we're basically doing this part. But we want to simplify it. Okay, we want to simplify it so that we don't have the parentheses. All right, so looking at example five, it says write an equation, so that's a formula, for the nth term in each arithmetic sequence. So we're going to do the same idea we just did a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So we want to find a sub 1. We're going to plug in a sub 1. That's just the first term here, so 5. So we have a sub n equals 5 plus n minus 1. We want to find the common difference. So what's happening from one to the other? Negative 13 minus 5 is negative 18. So here to get from here to here, we have to subtract 18 again. So negative 18 is my common difference. <clears throat> and again, technically this is your formula, but we want to simplify it so that it looks like y equals mx plus b. Now it's not a linear equation, but um, it's kind of like uh, that slope intercept form. Okay, so the way we do that is we distribute first. So here I'm going to get negative 18 in plus 18 for a sub n. Remember that's like our y. <coughs> and then we want to combine our like terms. So a sub n equals our slope. It's going to be negative 18. n is our x. The b is going to be what we get when we combine our like terms. So here 5 and 18 is plus 23. So that's like our uh, slope intercept form equation. So that's what it wants. I write an equation. Well, there's the equation. <clears throat> so again, it's the same thing we did before, but uh, now we don't need to plug in a number. We just need to simplify. Okay, so the last example here.
I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do it. One, a little easier than the other. Um, so we start with our formula. A sub n equals A sub 1 plus n minus 1 times the difference. Um, so notice here, we're going to leave A sub n and we're going to leave n minus 1. That part stays. But we only have the common difference. We only have the common difference is 6. We don't have the first term. So we need to find A sub 1. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. The easier way, since it starts us at A5, you can actually just work backwards to find A1. So we're going to put the 19 here, and we're going to go backwards using the common difference until we get the first term. So when we go backwards, we're going to end up subtracting 6. So 19 minus 6 is 13, minus 6 is 7, minus 6 is 1, minus 6 is negative 5. So this is telling us that A sub 1 is negative 5. So using this over here, we can actually plug that in for A sub 1. So A sub n equals negative 5. plus n minus 1 times 6. So we can distribute and solve, which we are going to do in just a second. But I'm going to show you the other way, because what if you're starting at the 20th one or the 50th one? You're not going to want to just keep going backwards. You want to plug it in. So here, we want to use a sub 5 to find a sub 1. So a sub 5 is the fifth number in the sequence. Well, what is the fifth number in the sequence? 19. So 19 equals a sub 1 plus 5 minus 1 times 6. So notice a sub 1 is now the only variable, so we can solve for that. So 19 equals a sub 1 plus 4 times 6. So 19 equals a sub 1 plus 24 so here to solve for a sub 1 we just subtract 24 from 19 so 19 minus 24 gives us negative 5 again so again for a smaller number you know between 1 and 10 going backwards is the easier way but anything after 10 you definitely want to use the formula because then it's going to be too complicated to work all the way um, up to that number. Okay, but either way, we get negative 5 is a sub 1. And then we just distribute and combine our like terms. So here we're going to get 6n minus 6. So a sub n equals negative 5 plus 6n minus 6. So 6n is our slope. And then our y-intercept would be negative 5 and negative 6 makes negative 11. So here's our equation for this for the sequence. <clears throat> so again, um, th these are arithmetic because you're adding. Geometric's going to be the same, except you're going to be multiplying uh, the sequence. But we're going to do all the same type of things.